Welcome to Ski Cap Hoodie and Shorts, Episode 38, Stories and Recipes, Squash Flowers. Hey everybody, I hope you're well today. My name is Ted Samaras. I am the host of the Ski Cap Hoodie and Shorts podcast, and I am so glad that uh, you are joining us today. Uh, as always, uh, today we are running through a stories and recipes episode, and um, since the uh, the taping of this uh, podcast is in uh, midsummer, um, I thought it'd be nice to talk about squash flowers. And you might be thinking to yourself, what are squash flowers, right? And so when you think about um, you know squash, you know whether any kind of squash it is, right? Whether it's pumpkins or gourds or zucchini or you know however you uh you know you look at it right it grows right on the vine on the ground and you get these little flowers um but specifically though um when we talk about squash flowers uh we're talking about like the zucchini flowers um that you see so um you know that those type of things so like either green or yellow squash uh that you see in the summer um and so if you've never seen one before, it kind of has like a yellowish orange um, coloring to it. Maybe it looks a little bit like an orchid. I don't pretend to be a botanist, uh, but just from what I've seen, it kind of looks like a like a yellowish orange kind of orchid. And they are edible. Um, in my area, I know they're more available in mid to late summer um, because that's when, you know, you start seeing the flowering of the zucchini and the, and the yellow squash. I know depending on where you are in the country or around the world, uh, your climates might allow for an earlier start in the summer uh, because of your warmer climates. Um, and, you know, it's not available, obviously, in every market. And part of that is because per pound, uh, it's expensive, right? Uh, and be, But you have to keep in mind that they're very light flowers, right? You're not buying like a pound of meat or something like that, right? Um, so you might see, you know, $25 a pound for squash flowers. But to get a pound of squash flowers, you're going to be walking out with like a crate of them, right? So so like how many, you know, squash flowers do you really need? Um, and so, you know, when you see it, you know, this is like maybe like a nice treat once or twice in the summer, especially like if you're trying to jazz up a plate, you know, you go, you buy like three, four of them. Um, what's nice is that because they are edible flowers, uh, you know, you could put them on your plate and you could put them out for a barbecue and it's edible. You can put them out, um, in your dishes and that type of thing. Uh, one quick thing about that, um, I always try to make sure that if I am putting out food um, on, you know, platters with uh, with decorative stuff, whether it's the holidays or whether it's, um, you know, a summer get together or that type of thing, I do try to make sure that, um, the you know, everything that's on the platter is edible, especially if I'm not going to be standing over it. Um, you know, I mean, I guess it's OK if you want to put like, you know, holly around the turkey or something like that and make it more festive um if you're going to be there and you're going to be the one actually cutting it but if you are like leaving food out for um you know for guests or that type of thing um you know you may want to consider um you know making sure that everything's edible so in case somebody eats something they don't you know poison themselves or choke on something or or, or do something like that um so yeah, so but again, don't be afraid of the the price. Just start out with maybe like a quick handful of these, um, and we're going to talk about how you can prepare them now. Now with these squash flowers, traditionally the way I've had them um, is I just put a little bit of oil in the pan and uh, I fry them up. So even like a nonstick pan or something like that, a little salt, maybe a little black pepper, uh, that type of thing, just to kind of, you know, just boost the flavor a little bit. And I am good. Uh, I don't try to deep fry them. I don't try to, you know, fry them too long or, or that type of thing. Um, but, um, you know, there are other ways that you can do it as well. I know some people like to put them in like a light ba batter. Um, so they'll just do like a simple like flour and water batter or maybe they'll do like a flour and beer batter just to make the batter a little bit lighter. And they'll give them a quick dip in there. You know, you don't want to make it heavy, right? You're not trying to make a waffle out of this. Um, but, you know, you don't want to make it heavy or anything like that. So you give it like a quick, um, you know, batter. Uh, and you fry them up the same way, a little salt, and you're good to go. Um, other people um, I've seen have 
done this where it is stuffed. Um, and you can do it a couple of ways, right, if you want to stuff. I know some people like to stuff it with, like, soft cheeses, like goat cheese or, or feta. Um, you know, that's not my thing, uh, especially feta, but that is a story for another podcast. Um, but I know some people like to do that. And then they, you know, so now they give it a quick um, you know, fry or bake or something like that. If you are going to do that, just, you know, be careful as you're putting stuff in the flour um, because of the fact that, you know, it is, you know, it can rip. And that's okay if it rips, right? You still serve it because it's edible. But, um, you know, you do want to, if you're worried about presentation, just kind of, you know, stuff it softly so this way you don't tear the flour. Um, another way that you can have these stuffed is if you've ever had, like, stuffed vegetables like stuffed squash or stuffed peppers or, or something like that. I know some people, you know, it generally involves rice, right? Some people like to do it vegetarian where it's like, you know, rice and, you know, maybe the inside of some of the vegetables. Um, you know, some people do it with rice and meat, you know, all that type of stuff. But however you do it, you can always take a little bit of that stuffing and fill it in a squash flour as well. Um, and then kind of just, you know, bake them off uh, the way you would. Now, the only thing with this is um, if you steal like stuffed vegetable recipe uh, with rice, um, you know, the, the rice is only cooked a little bit before they put in the vegetable because it's going to be in the vegetable a long time and you don't want the rice to get too mushy. If you were going to do it here with the flowers, what you want to do is you want to make sure that that rice stuffing is cooked through first because you can't cook the flour for very long. So you'll cook the stuffing first, um, you know, the rice stuffing first. You'll stuff it into your flour and you'll give it just a quick kind of warm up uh, and you'll be good to go. Uh, you know, in terms of other ideas uh, that you might want to try, right, it might be nice to have like kind of like a uh, mushroom and wild rice type of uh, rice stuffing. So it's kind of like stuffed vegetables, but, you know, it's something a little bit different um, than the standard. You know, this is the inside of the vegetable that I'm putting back in with the rice. Um, if you want to make it a little more decadent, you can even try like a seafood stuffing because, again, the flour is not going to have like a lot of taste. It's more, um, you know, the visual. And so, you know, you can do something like that where since it's just the vessel, um, you know, you can have it like that. You can even have this where it's fruit based um, too. You can have it like a dessert where like maybe you have like a little yogurt in it and a little bit of fruit. Um, you can also do it where um, you just make it part of the fruit platter where you kind of, you know, serve some fruit out and you can put a few of these flowers on for garnishment, but also people can eat them as well. So that's what's nice about having uh, this type of edible flower. But however you decide to do it, um, it's one of those things that like I know, like it's not available in every market and maybe you see it at like a farmer's market or your local um, kind of farm grocery store or that type of thing, and you never know what to do with it. Um, but I encourage you to try it out. It's kind of fun to be able to say, you know, you ate squash flowers uh, and that type of thing. And I definitely don't go and get like, you know, a uh, hundred squash flowers at the same time because you, you're not going to want to eat them all in one shot night. So because this is a story and recipe um, episode, um, and it's regarding squash flowers, you know, I want to make sure um, that we, you know, acknowledge my dad again in this podcast. So um, with that, uh, God bless America and let's eat. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope you're willing to try out, um, you know, these squash flowers. Like I said, just grab a handful and, uh, you know, start with that. And again, you know, real simple, put them in the pan, fry them up, salt, that's the, probably the best way to try them so you can actually tell some of the sweetness of the flour itself. And then you can go ahead and, and mess around with all the other uh, recipe ideas that we tried out. Um, but I'd love to hear how you use them. Again, this show is based on your feedback. Uh, and so I love, um, you know, talking about these topics and then seeing what you guys come up with out there or what your experiences have been. So um, the main website for the podcast is www.skicaphoodieandshorts.com where you can stream this from as well as um, see some other content. If you want to email me, you can do it at skicaphoodieandshorts at gmail.com. If you'd like to reach out to me on social media, feel free to do so at my main Twitter handle, which is at our tech coach. And um, if you want to see some of the great projects that we are working on with um, some global educators, um, go to my main educational website, which is www.ourtechcoach. Dot com. So again, thank you very much for your time. Um, I know how valuable it is and I appreciate you uh, listening to these podcasts uh, whenever you're able to. So as always, 
be good to yourself and be yourself.